are listening to Out of the Box with Rosie Tran. Out of the Box is sponsored by HugMeTees.com. Spread love, give a hug, HugMeTees.com. Guys, check us out on SoundCloud.com slash Out of the Box Podcast. And as always on iTunes and Stitcher Radio. If you enjoy the podcast, click on the subscribe button. It really, really helps us out a lot. Um, I want to say thank you to all the new listeners. I'm very excited about all of the new subscriptions and follows and things like that. I know a lot of you guys are expecting a comedy podcast because I mostly do stand up and that's how I promote the show. But you guys will be happy to know that I have very diverse and excellent guests from all over the country in many fields to bring you guys the best information and making your life better. I'm here this week with therapist. Um, he also has an awesome podcast called the nurturing truth podcast, which you can find on YouTube and a really cool blog called the nurturing truth blog. Steven, how are you today? Hey, I'm really good. It's good to be here. Good. I'm excited to have you on here. Um, we actually met through Twitter. (laughs) That's right. Um, so I wanted to talk to you about therapy because it's so important and I'm sure my listeners are so sick of me hammering psychology down their throats, but it's <laughs> really important, right? Yes, it's very important. Yeah. Um, I had a friend actually recently tell me, he said, Rosie, I don't want to be psychoanalyzed and I'm not really into that. And mm. what I have to say is that's kind of like having cancer and drinking, you know, a bottle of Theraflu or whatever, NyQuil to cure it. It's like if we don't find the root of our problems, then how are we ever going to fix them? So that's just kind of a silly viewpoint. But I've heard that from a lot of people. You know, when people go to therapy, a lot of times, as you know, as a therapist, sometimes they, they, they don't think they need it or they think that you have to be crazy. Is this a misconception that you get a lot? Yeah, I think, well, what... Well, I think it springs out of the experience that people have of going to therapy and it's like they're talking to a mirror or they're talking to a wall Mm -hmm. and they don't, they don't get the experience that they're being enjoined on a healing process with a real authentic human being. So I think that's some of where that springs out of. And I also think that there, yeah, there is this sort of social stigma, this cultural stigma that, that if you ask for help, or if you you know you cry out for help, or you you show that you're in pain, this makes you weak and therefore undesirable and unlovable and all these other sort of things, which just repeats the cycle. So, and I think finding a good therapist is key because you know I have myself had some pretty bad therapists that made me feel like I was going crazy, <laughs> but when yeah. I found the right one. I definitely felt better and felt like I was really doing something to help myself. What about the stereotype or stigma that I've heard from some people that a therapist doesn't have your best interest because obviously they want you to be more crazy, quote unquote, or more effed up so that they can get more money by seeing you for more sessions. Have you heard that? Yeah. Well, I mean, and I think there's some truth to it. I think a lot of therapists suck. (laughs) (laughs) I totally agree. Like I said, yeah. I've had a couple bad ones myself. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I've had a, a few bad ones myself too. It's it's like, um, well, the way the system is rigged is you have to um, you have to diagnose for the insurance companies, okay. and you know, diagnosis is this label that oftentimes isn't very useful. And what this does, so long as you're diagnosing, you're ensuring that that insurance money comes in. And uh, I I tend to like. I like the things to be more free market. I like to not have to rely on insurance money um, to get clients because I think that it it just pulls the middleman out of the scenario. And I think when the middleman's in the scenario, it muddles things up. It's like business is part of something that isn't about business, right? So this is about healing and health and happiness, and yet you're putting a businessman in the middle with dealing with the finance. So that's the hard part, right? Yeah, and you're putting pharmaceuticals in there. And and then also it's like, you know, what are the standards for becoming a therapist? I mean, you you go and you study and you, you get your diploma and then you're ready. You're the guru now. And and you can have your little you can have your office and you can have people in there, the door is shut, and then you become this powerful guru. You can <laughs> And, you know, mold people and twist people the way you want to, you know, it's like, so there, there aren't very good standards out there for, for what it is to be a therapist. I think that'll change. I think the market and I think, uh, I think entrepreneurs and I think enterprises out there will, will set standards, will create more accountability than there currently is. 
so so yeah so i think there are a lot of crap therapists out there i think there are a lot of people that are addicted to their comfort and they call themselves therapists and this is the way they manage it so yeah and so i would recommend first of all i recommend the, uh, therapy or personal development or healing any type of you know mental health healing for everyone because we all have grown up in dysfunctional families but this is really about trusting your gut and finding someone that you trust and it's okay to say you know what I don't I don't feel comfortable with you and you know that's something I did I was in counseling and within two section set sessions I was like okay this guy sucks <laughs> like I yeah. knew he sucked I knew he was like awful and um you know, I asked him a question about himself and, you know, any good therapist would be very happy to answer the question. He got very defensive and was like, well, this isn't about me. It's about you. And he was clearly like stressed that I was like yeah. asking him questions. I'm like, yeah, you're not probably good. too I'm, real for him. I'm like, I'm out of here. <laughs> and then yeah. the next um, person that I ended up going with was amazing. And I had her for about six months and she helped me so much. So yeah. it, it's okay if you're out there, even if you're a little messed up or going because you really need help. If you feel like the person is just not, you know, out for your best interest, it's okay to be like, see ya. <laughs> yes, exactly. You don't, you don't owe it to anybody to stay in a therapy relationship. It's a professional service and it's for you. You pay exactly. the money, so it's there for you. So it's the same thing as going to a restaurant. It's the same thing as going to the movies. It's a service. So Yeah, if it's a bad movie, you can walk out. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. There you go. Well, and and the way to find a good therapist is to do the work yourself first. Exactly. That's it. That's uh, how I I kind of felt the feelers out. You know. So I always encourage people to go out there, read the self help books. You know, do a lot of the work yourself, and then you know, kind of go in a little bit more. But some people are at a you know at a very desperate stage. So I understand that. But the all of this work is internal anyway, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I wanted to talk to you because I noticed from Nurturing Truth um, that you are an advocate for people working on themselves before they have children. Yes. And um, I think this is so important. You know, I don't... I, I don't want any of my listeners who have children to say, well, you know, Rosie doesn't have kids, so she doesn't know what she's talking about. Or Rosie has, you know, doesn't, you know, want kids or whatever. I, I haven't said that I'm on the fence. And um, the reason I'm on the fence is actually because of other parents I've met. Many, uh -huh. many parents I've met who are complaining that there's so many bad kids out there. You know, they're either their kids are being bullied on the playground by uh, or their kids are having to deal with other kids where the parents just don't know what they're doing and mm. I, how damaging is this for people to be having kids or popping out kids who have no concept uh, you know just as a therapist it's i i know the answer but i want to have a professional validation mm -hmm. it, it, i mean is this just how damaging can this be to the kids yeah well i mean well child abuse i i think and there's some pretty good scientific evidence to back it up that a lot of the problems that people have as adults spring from child abuse. And uh, what happens is, is through child abuse, through emotional abuse, verbal abuse, physical abuse, we lose access to our prefrontal cortex, which is our logic center. It's our reasoning brain. So we revert back into our limbic system, which is uh, it's the rat brain. It's the give me sex, give me sugar, you know, give me it's sleep. fight or flight, correct? Fight or flight. There yes. we go. Exactly. And so, so to get back to your question, people having children, it's like, wow, what I think of is, you know, really look at yourself. That's when, when, I, when I hear these parents, oh, there's all these really bad kids out there and all this, <laughs> all this stuff. Well, look at yourself, you know, and what are you exposing your child to? Where are you putting your child into? I mean, that's what I think of. And I, I, also, when you brought this up, I immediately thought of public school. And I thought of how toxic it is to children. So, yes, yeah, so there's this, I mean, there's this huge kind of um, system going on right now that's very, uh, it's very toxic toward children. And the prospect of adding more children, more dependence, you know, people who are dependent on you into that sludge is what's daunting to say the least. So I could definitely understand your hesitation. And Well, I hear this a lot is this is the justification I hear from a lot of parents that have a lot of work to do on themselves. Um, they'll say, well, you know, I didn't have the perfect childhood 
and I'm fine. <laughs> oh boy. Yeah. <laughs> and then they go and projectile vomit their issues onto their poor innocent kids. Yeah. Yeah. It's <laughs> yeah, oh man. Well, my mom and dad was or dad was an alcoholic or I well that's just the way things are. That's just the way it is and I'm fine. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then they pass the buck to the next generation. It's and like, they pass it on exactly. Yeah, when when does it when do you become the change you want to see in the world and, and stop putting it onto your children? So, um what would you recommend, you know, if you already have kids, that's fine, you know, it's 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 okay to stop the bleeding. And I'm not saying having kids is a bad thing. I actually have, you know, nieces and nephews and other relatives and I love and adore kids. And everyone's always like, why don't you have kids? Why don't you have kids? You would be such a great mom. Again, I'm still on the fence. Yeah. But um, what are some steps that parents who maybe didn't do any work on themselves in their 20s or whatever, and or maybe they were a teen mom, what can they do to kind of stop the bleeding and fix these problems so that they're not, repeating these vicious cycles onto their kids again yes that's i mean that's a great question yeah because when i it's like when i address when i address child abuse i don't want to shame parents you know par parents they have kids it's like okay steve i i have kids now like this <laughs> this doesn't help you, I you can't pull stop. Out from, you know it's like give me some solutions here so so the first thing i say is heal yourself heal yourself when you're not dedicated to meeting the needs of your child when when you got some off time heal yourself go for a walk talk to yourself nurture your own inner child get into therapy get into family therapy find a good therapist uh, alice miller who's an incredible psychological writer she she wrote some essays on how to find a good therapist i think that's a great resource that you can look at get into the therapy help i would say another thing is um you know don't lean on your child your child is not your parent. You're the parent. Uh, it's not, you know, this isn't your little husband or your little wife. This is a child that's fully dependent on you. So, so does that happen a lot? Do people project that onto their child, like a little husband or little wife? I haven't heard that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like, um, you know, mommy's little husband. It's mommy's confessor. You know, mom mom goes to the boy or to the, to the girl and spills out all their problems on the it. child. Got it. Got it. It's like the child can't help the parent with emotional processing. So so that, I think that's a big one. And, I, you know, I say this with, with love. I'm not here to, to shame people. And, you know, I'm just here to say, look, look at the child and support the child. Think about the child's needs. And that's, that's the basic root of good parenting is meeting the child's needs. Uh, another thing you can do if you're a parent already is... <sighs> This is a big one, Rosie. This is a really big one. Okay, I'm ready for the gold. 90% <laughs> of people get married by age 50. 40 to 50% of those marriages end in divorce. Yes, that is true. So and a very big, sad statistic. It's a very sad st statistic. So the big one here is respect your partner. Is work with your partner. Work on your communication. Develop some nonviolent communication techniques. Uh, you know, cool, cool the fights gather your breath, go for walks together. This this relationship w between the mother and the father or the mother and the mother, the father and the father, whatever combination is going on, is so important to the child. So if it's scary to go inside and work with your own inner child, at least the very least thing you can do is really tighten things up with your marriage partner because divorce is catastrophic for a child and I've seen it I've seen it over and over and over again it's it's one of the worst things that a child can go through so really get on the same side as your partner really clear up the places you have co uh, conflicts controversies dramas old wounds really get in the clear with your communication because that has a massive pr profound effect on the child so these would be the ba the basic things that I would say one last one I just want to throw in there is don't use punishment. If you're a parent, you've got a child, punishment sends some very basic messages to a child. Um, one, that they need to be manipulated or they need to be put into double binds or they need to be uh, cross-examined with logic in order to get them to behave better. Another thing is that if the child isn't 
behaving according to my expectations, putting that punishment on the child is very confusing for a child because a child wants to explore and learn. So suddenly punishment has come into their field and their, curio their curiosity dims. Their willingness to learn dims. So, so I, well, say, stay I, I actually, I actually agree with a lot of things you're saying now. But some people might be saying, "Okay, Stephen, well, what do I do when I'm in the grocery store and my kid is throwing an absolute temper tantrum?" Yeah, yeah. Well, I would say it's like, how did it get to that point? You know, like how did it get to the point where the child is felt feels so unheard? And so unvalidated mm. that they've got to act out in this public place. So an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. That is so true. I never thought of it that way because a lot of people think of kids as just acting out for no reason. But, you know, thinking of my own childhood, whenever I acted out, it was because I was frustrated. Yes. So that is a really, really good point. Um, yeah. Yeah, I never thought of it that way. And that is amazing that you brought that up because, like I said, uh, I was bringing up a hypothetical question that a lot of parents might be asking. What do I do when my kid is throwing a temper tantrum? Temper tantrums are a symptom of an underlying problem of, like you said, not being heard or not being understood or being frustrated about other things. Yeah. Yeah. So stay in tune. Stay in tune with the child. It's like, let them, if they, if they get to a temper tantrum, it's like, look at yourself. <laughs> you know? Look at yourself. Because children are rational and empirical. And children really learn from their parents. So if they're throwing a temper tantrum, it's like, well, where did they learn to do that? Where did they learn that they needed, that they have to make it get to the point where they're throwing a temper tantrum in order to be heard and validated? Yeah, that's so true. It's like the parent who's like, oh, I, you know, the kid gets in trouble for cursing at school. And the dad's like, I don't know where the fuck they learned that from. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah, <laughs> tell me about it. Yeah. I hear I've heard that one a lot. So, um, OK, so so that's important. I totally agree with you. Working on your marriage is so important and having that, you know, front um, to raise kids together and not having a discombobulated family unit. But what about people who are genuinely unhappy and they're, quote unquote, staying in the marriage for the kids? And there's this underlying um, angst and anger and resentment towards the other partner. You know, do you believe that two people truly are not compatible i don't i think that everyone that we attract into our lives is there to teach us to learn and grow and to self-actualize but mm -hmm. you know what if someone is in an unhappy marriage and has been for you know 10 plus years and they're staying together for the kids is that teaching the kid something you know that is not good or is it better just to get a divorce or you know what what is your take on that mm, that's a really interesting question yeah well i think it's like you got to go to the root of it. You've got to go back. You've got to go back, 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 back in time to where that initial breach of trust occurred. And it can happen with little things and it can happen with little things that that erode the relationship over time. I think the very I think the very most important thing is well if you can't if you can't stay together. I mean, if you just really you really can't be around this other person, you've you've got to make it as smooth and as gentle and as open of communication as possible um, with the child and with each other transitioning out of this marriage relationship. I really think it's a last resort. I think, I think that there's a reason you came together in the first place. There's a reason why you chose to have a child. So you've got to go back. You've got to go back to wherever the origins of the breach of trust have occurred or where, wherever the friction is occurring from. And, and really get honest and really get real about it because there are other people involved. It's like when you have a child, it's, it's not me, me, me anymore. It's, it's the child, child, child. So you've, you've got to make the child the focal piece, the centerpiece of whatever occurs in this relationship with your marriage partner. I actually would disagree with you on that, Stephen. Um, I don't think that people are me, me, me and then child, child, child. I think when pe adults are acting and you may agree with this too, but the way you worded it, I disagree with, um, sure. people are not usually adults who are very selfish. It's not me, me, me. It's ego, ego, ego. <laughs> oh, there you go. <laughs> because yeah, if they go. were thinking me, 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 then they wouldn't be having the issues that they are having with their children. <laughs> yeah. I like that. That's a great <laughs> distinction. And I totally agree with you there. Yeah. It's ego, ego, ego. There you go. Exactly. So there's a difference, listeners, between me and ego. If you were thinking of yourself, then you would be thinking of the best thing for yourself and your child yes. in a healthy and loving way. But you're not. Yes. You're thinking of, like you said, that reptilian rat brain 
which yeah. is uh, ego, ego, ego. It's all about getting your little needs met and not your greater needs, which I consider self-actualization. I want to talk about that because, um, y- you know, when you say divorce is a last, um, you know, should be the last option, you know, I think a lot of people do feel that they've done everything they can. Um, yet, m- I think the majority, I, I don't know what the statistic is on second marriage failure, but it's a lot higher mm. um, than first marriage failure. And what ha- tends to happen is because, because people didn't fix the problems in their first marriage, all they do is just kind of vomit those problems over into a second marriage with a new person. Is that your, yeah. your experience? Yeah, I, that's definitely my experience. I mean, it makes perfect sense, too. It's like, well, you know, you couldn't resolve things. How much therapy did you go to? How how much did you work on yourself between your marriages? And it's like most people aren't most people aren't searching for the perfect partner. Most people are searching for the the perfect babysitter. Someone to really, <laughs> you know, I love that. Really, yeah, yeah, I like it too. It's it, it, it's a uh, it's great. It's 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 a great way to describe it because people are looking for adults are looking for the perfect babysitter to mother them or to father them. In take the care ways. of me. Take care of my yeah. needs because I don't yeah. want to fix myself. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So you got to really address that before you jump into another marriage. And it's like, oh my gosh, if you had a marriage and it failed, you know, you got to look at that. You really got to look at that. You got to take some time with that because you don't, you know, it'll hurt your self-esteem to live a life where you leave this wreckage of failed romantic relationships in your wake. It it has an effect. So I think, and the great way to address that is to just go into your childhood and see what's going on, see in the ways in which you need to be your own perfect babysitter. Exactly. And which is why I am such an advocate for psychology and self-help and other things. And, you know, I, I just have heard so many people because I've, you know, I started in the stand-up comedy world and then I've been, you know, branching off with my podcast and I've heard a lot of people saying, you know, I just you know, it's so uncomfortable and I don't want to be psychoanalyzed and I don't want to all these taboo subjects like finance and personal development and emotional issues and all these things that we couldn't and sex and things that we quote unquote shouldn't talk about in society are all of the things that we should be talking about. Yeah. These are the important things. This is like, you know, the 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 foundation of building a happy, healthy life. And it's, it's just so silly that as a society we, you know, it's it, it's not um, proper table talk or whatever, and we should be talking about the weather and, and sports and other nonsensical things yeah. when the substance of life is swept under the rug. And so I want to bring that to a forefront. And what do you think about the idea that just anyone can have a child? You know, it. I, I don't know what the solution is. I've heard various topics from other comedians and other intellectuals mm. oh, well we should have a it should be like a driver's license where you have to take a test or or prove your um that you deserve to have a child and i know there's a lot of ethics questions and a lot of um um questions about our own humanity but with the amount of um children that are being abused and with the amount of children that are being abandoned and other things and and uh, and parent unfit parents yeah. Um, is this such a crazy idea? What do you think is a solution other than just saying, hey, you know, go get help people? It just seems like there should be another solution to just being able to pop out a human life, which is one of the most important things, you know, in the world. Yeah. Yeah. There's, I mean, there's some interesting solutions. Yeah. The, the license to procreate, or, <laughs> you know, guilds where you, you join a guild and you work toward being, uh, you know, eligible to be a parent yeah exactly i think you have to focus on what you can control and what you can control is you can control your finances you can control your emotional well well well-being health and you can control the your relationships you can control who you, you who you allow into your life and who you disallow into your life and i think that's the basis of I think it's the basis of progress in society. So so these big time questions of well what's the future going to look like and what's the future of parenting and these we sort of things. We can't control that, right? It's like yeah, we can, we can't control that. And people that try to control that, they well they become politicians and they <laughs> they use power to get their means, you know. So so it's like you just got to you got to focus on what you can control. And and those are those basic things. Your physical health also is one of them. So 
that's what I would say. That's so true. And we're kind yeah. of all like living in this in- insane asylum, right? So we have to make up our own rules. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, we have to find our way. And, and there are very few good parent figures in the world. Uh, fortunately, more and more are coming out. People are waking up. The internet is, is really spurring things along. And I'm a, I remain cautiously optimistic. I see also that, that violence figures are down. Um, there's less war across the globe than there's ever been before. Uh, you know, some really great startups and, and big time companies like Google and Microsoft are doing some great things. So it's like I remain cautiously optimistic, but but parenting is one of these things that is still kind of in the dark ages. I mean, there's still, I don't know, something, something at least over 10 states that allow corporal punishment in schools, children, children getting spanked. You know, there's stories all the time coming out of Texas that the kids are getting spanked in the schools by the principals. So it's like. Yeah, parenting is still still lagging, I think. So that's where that's where I'm you know, I'm more in, interested in emotional health and relationships and self knowledge and so this is my, my bailiwick, so to speak. This is my um jurisdiction or whatever. I wanna delve into what you said earlier that was really an eye opener for me. Mm-hmm. Um and because about you know, child if children are acting out it's it's like a their their boiling point right like how did we get to this point because all of the kids that i remember growing up with who were either bullies or really really misbehaved children mm-hmm. all had very bad home lives mm-hmm. right and so it seems like if you're punishing a kid for being bad like you said because i've you know i've never ever heard the concept of don't punish children i've heard you know that obviously violence doesn't really do anything or physical punishment doesn't really do anything yeah and you know we're in the age of timeouts and other things like that mm. but you're saying punishment in at, in general doesn't work no it doesn't you have to you have to provide reason and evidence and children will challenge you and so you've got to raise your game <laughs> you <know? laughs> that's, that's what it is Ch- children are little scientists so if you're punishing a little scientist it's like you know wake up you you got you got more work to do you've got you've got to raise your game up you know, maybe you've got to let go of the TV. Maybe you've got to let go of some of your addictions. You've you've got to think. You've got to think more. I think that's that's the challenge with children. It's like they're little geniuses. So you <laughs> you've got to keep up. You I know? love that, and it's so true because my little niece is just so smart, and it's I think it's because especially young children they haven't been fully brainwashed by the cultural conditioning and social conditioning yes yeah. <laughs> and they're just truth speakers mm-hmm. they are just truth speakers if you say something that doesn't make sense a little kid will be like but why that doesn't make sense <laughs> mm-hmm. and they yeah. will question you and They'll you have to come up with a reason why society is messed up and explain to them why it doesn't make sense <laughs> yeah yeah well, well here's another thing it's like like children will challenge you because they're they're just they're curious. They're really really curious. So what is your own relationship with challenging yourself? Are you comfortable with challenging yourself? Are you comfortable with, you know, rising to some challenges in your life? If you are, you're going to be more in that camp of parenting that is interested in facilitating children rather than punishing them. So what is the the distinction for people who don't know what you're talking about? Uh, between punishment and facilitation? Facilitation, yes. Yeah, facilitation. So, so children are curious. Ch- children want to learn. It's like you see all these child, these child prodigies. They're really into things, and it's like, well, at some level, their parents are encouraging them. Now, sometimes they they take it so far and they become these tiger mothers. But it, it's like these like children are all geniuses. They really are. I've worked with I worked with children for five years, and some of them had it abused out of them quite early, but some of them retained it. Children are entrepreneurial. Children want to grow. Children want to help the world. Children love they were animals. They're optimistic. Yeah, they were optimistic. So it's like when when I talk about facilitation, it's having the humility, having the humility to say this is where I can help you. This is where someone else can help you. Uh, you know, rising to challenges and stepping back and just allowing them to conduct their ins- experiments and let the natural consequences of their behaviors accrue to them. You know, if they want to start a business at six or seven years old, it's like, hey, you know, we don't live in a society where this is currently possible. You know, kids with lemon lemonade stands get shut down <laughs> all the time. It's like, 
you know, but but a facilitative parent would say, well, you want to do that? Well, let's see. Let's see how I can help you with that. So you're saying that it's not that children don't need structure. You're just saying that the pun- the the punishment reward basically system, which is basically teaching conditional love, doesn't work. Yeah, and we have our own, like, it's it's like as a culture and a society, we have our own structures that we put onto them. But they buck those structures. They don't want those structures. Children build their own. Exactly. Children build their own structures. And, you know, if we just, if we had a little more humility, we would say, well, you know, let's let's see what this kid, let's see what this kid can do. Let's go where this kid goes. Let's let this kid be the leader in his own life. And let's help him out with that. So, so I want to talk about how giving love and taking away love is is teaching conditional love and the difference between unconditional love and conditional love because i think probably 99 percent of us were raised with the conditional love model Mm -hmm. which is um if you're good you get love from me and if you're bad then i take love away yeah and this is a very type of you know very primitive way of looking at the world um, to say basically good or bad. It's a very dualistic system that teaches one way or the other. Yeah. And um, you're saying that there's that the world is a rainbow and that there's other colors in this spectrum, not just black and white. Yeah. Well, there, yeah. There are two things that come to mind when you when you say that. And I think that's that's a great point that you bring up. I would say the f- the first thing is so interesting. The first thing that occurred to me was. As a society, as a culture, we love our rebels. You know, we love our James Deans. We love our Jimi <laughs> Hendrixes. We love our Janis Joplins, our Kurt Cobains. It's like, we love them. Uh, but but not they don't get that mainstream acceptance until after they're gone. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So so it's so interesting. This is so extrapolated out. But but that's how it is in the that's how it is in the home life. It's like when the kids are gone and they're grown up and they're they're out of our lives. We miss them. We miss the rebellion. We miss their independent fire. It's like, oh, if we would just, if we just could have. But when they're living in the house, all we do is try to repress it, right? Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Yeah. So, so that's the first thing I think of, and then, and then another thing is, is like, you know, it's, it's not the child's job to love us, the the parents or the adults. Can you tell that to my parents? Oh my gosh! (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, I wish I could put it on a bumper sticker and sell a million because of Because the children were not asked to be born. We we are choosing to have them. Yes, exactly. So it's our responsibility, if we choose to be parents, uh, to love them. To love them, to meet their needs, and to nurture them. There's no other way about it. It's not. It's like, you know, they they need. They need energy. They need life. They They need, they need, they need, they need. So we give, we give, we give, we give. That's the responsibility we have if we're going to be, you know, enlightened parents, if we're going to be good parents. So so that is very great advice for people that have kids. Um, obviously, uh, let's go over some of the stuff Stephen talked about. He, first of all, work on yourself first and foremost so that you're not vomiting your issues all over to your poor, innocent kids. And then um, encourage them and try to help them to grow and learn as much as they can. Um, And 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 get out of the way. And get get out out of the way. way. That's a good one. (laughs) And then um, I want to talk about one more thing before I move on to some advice for non-parents or parents who are on or future parents or prospective parents who are on the fence. Great. Um, What about this idea of a little me? A lot of people have this idea you know well i was a baseball player so my son's gonna be a baseball player or i always wanted to be a model so now i'm gonna put my kid in modeling classes this seems to be a common theme i've seen among many parents and how unhealthy is this um Mm -hmm. and and what can be done about this well it's profoundly uncurious it's and the the opposite sometimes i think that and i'm not so clear on this right now but but sometimes i think the opposite of curiosity is arrogance like knowing no like thinking you know something when you really don't okay <laughs> that's very true <laughs> yeah so so it's like oh my kid's going to well alice miller talks about this in drama the gifted child she says that the person who isn't ready to have children will have a child and view it as the birth of their own true self 
Mm, so it's like that's they pro- some deep stuff right there. Yeah. So they're projecting onto the child what they themselves wanted, what the, the kind of life that they they could have given themselves, but chose not to. Chose and to that's why a, a lot of parents are like, "I gave you everything, and you're so ungrateful because you're, they're trying to force their own dreams and desires onto someone else who doesn't want it." Mm-hmm. And of yeah. course, who's going to be grateful for that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, it's profoundly uncurious. It's like you know, children are going to find their own way. You've got to facilitate. You've you've got to just point out some some pitfalls along the way. Encourage them, meet their needs, hold them, love them, care for them along the path, and they'll find their own way. It's up to them to find their own way. That's how you nurture independence in another person. So, is it fair to say that people that want mini me's or people that want um miniature versions of themselves mm-hmm. are in a way uh live not living their own fulfilled lives yeah i would definitely say so but this you know this it's interesting i think we're going to transition to this this whole idea of being child free it's like you get to you have a life and you have many years in which to live your life and and especially in your adulthood you have a lot of independence and choice should you choose to um take it and there's a great life that, that can be had. You can really live some of your dreams in this life. And you can have a really, really good go at it and really get the best out of it. Um, but I think a lot of people are too scared to do that. I think that a lot of people have that, that independence and that courageousness to go and have a really bomb, kick-ass life uh, abused out of them and, and brainwashed out of them. And there's so much pressure. There's so much pressure in the society to pair up and have babies and nest down and and then just hunker in for retirement. It's like that's I think I get asked when I'm gonna have kids at least once a day. Uh, yeah, that's really <laughs> Well intense. when are you and your husband gonna have kids? And yeah. and it's, it's Well you've got a life to live, Rosie. But it's also know? a very personal decision, you know. It's yeah. it's like if I went up to someone and said, Well, when are you gonna get a hysterectomy or when are you gonna you know, have anal sex. It's just, a, it's just a very personal decision that has mm-hmm. nothing to do with anyone else. Yet, for some reason, people feel very socially obligated. And I also know many people who have had children who, I, who you know, I know many people who have children who love children and, and love mm-hmm. their children are so happy and their, their dream was to be a parent. But I also know many people who have had children, either they got a girl pregnant or, you know, they felt obligated to have children because of social pressures and they're very, very unhappy. And they, mm-hmm. they ask me in a very sort of, when are you going to join the misery club type of way? <laughs> That's it. Yeah. <laughs> people, people actually want to give birth to their true self and they, and they conflate it with, with having children. That, uh, that is so deep. I love that. That is amazing. And, and very, um, first of all, I can attest to what you're saying because in my early twenties, I had a lot of personal turmoil, which was not healed, which has now been healed or in the process of being healed. And mm. all I wanted to do was have kids, Stephen. It was scary. Like mm. I, I wanted to have like five kids. And, mm. I, and I thought at first that it was just my biological clock ticking. But actually now I'm older and closer to the biological clock. And it's kind of in my clock. It's not ticking as fer- feverishly as it was when I was in turmoil. Mm. And I think you're totally right as I felt out of control like I I couldn't control my life and I wanted a little being to kind of um, do that too yeah, as you're ma- saying manage all your anxiety through yeah you know? and I think that's what my mother did and I've seen so many other parents doing that to their kids and it's obviously you can't control people's parenting it's not your child but it's very frustrating to watch yeah you can point out I mean it's it's fear based parenting yes so. exactly yeah. um, okay so that um covers that's very very important so if you're already a parent you know don't despair there's you haven't ruined your kid's life yet (laughs) there are options yeah there there are are options options to um to fix um are you i i don't know the specific timelines when what stage of childhood are are children's personalities kind of starting to develop or or yeah i've heard zero to five zero to five yeah i've heard that that's that's the real um that's really when the personality is getting cemented, and, and I and I learned this a bit in my um, in my development in my human development class that I just took for counseling school. So, so that's the, the age where people really need to focus on on nurturing and 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 helping and and facilitating, correct? 
Yeah, I think if you do a, if you do a damn good job for those years, it's like then they start to take over. They start the the children start to um, do it themselves. Yeah. So don't mess up your kids, people. <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. <laughs> what about teenage years? Is that just too late? I mean, is it already the damage is done type of thing? Well, it's never too late, but um, but uh, yeah, I think. You know, it's like when I when I got bigger than my parents, my parents my parents um, taught me like might is right and my house my rules, and so when I became mightier than them, when I was bigger than them, it was like well now it's my house my rules, <laughs> and and my teenage years were hell. But it's like that was a reflection of my early childhood. It was just it, it just was flipped around and suddenly less societally acceptable. It's like the child to dominate the parents. What is this? And so there was just a lot more turmoil. But it's like I had a, I had a therapist um, who worked with me for about four, four to six sessions when I was 15. And he really helped me with some things. So, so it's never too late. Even speaking from personal experience, it is never too late. I met a guy when I was – I just turned 18. And I met him in a park. I, wa- I was in a park with a girlfriend and he was playing a guitar and he was this, this really chill dude. And uh, he owned his own business, and he let me play a song for him. And then I started going to these open mics that he was facilitating. And so it's it's never too late. This guy had a massive impact on on that on point in life, my life. Right? So it's never too late. I want to. I, I really wish that there was some type of program to teach this in schools, and also teach this to parents, because many times when children act out, as we talked about earlier. The children are blamed. Well, you're just out of line or you're a bad kid or you need to straighten up. But really, it's the parents that should be to blame. I remember when I was 16 years old, I ran away from home. Mm. And the reason I ran away from home wasn't because of anything I did. It was because I couldn't stand being in a household, tr- being so controlled because my my dad has extreme control issues. Yeah. and. It, kind of what you said. It was his house. This is my house, my rules, and you have to do everything I say or otherwise, you know, blah, 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 blah. And I just felt so small, physically small and emotionally small because I was being put into the smallest, tiniest little box that existed. And I, as you know by the name of the podcast, am an out-of-the-box person. <laughs> yeah, so I left the house, you know, not because I was doing drugs or doing something bad or acting out, but because I was being so repressed and so Mm -hmm. is you know what what can we do as a society or what can the listeners do if maybe there's some teachers listening or counselors listening or parents listening that you know what like you said when the kids are acting out it's really we should look in the mirror right yeah yeah there's that and and you said like it's so interesting you said the teachers and counselors listening it's like well there you go listen 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 intensely listen attentively listen 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 to the children just listen you know that's like that's how you learn you don't you, yeah, this great, you don't this learn great, by telling right <laughs> yeah exactly there's this great little placard in, in the barber shop when I, that I used to go to as a kid it said you ain't, you ain't learning nothing if you're yakking all the time or something like this <laughs> i thought it was great but it's true listen listen and you'll learn you'll learn from the child you'll learn what their needs are you'll learn You'll learn everything. You'll learn so much. And and I can say working as a teacher, I worked as a teacher for five years in a, in a variety of school settings. And it's like I learned how to be with my own inner child from listening to these children and just learning all about them. I was I was the student and they were the teachers in a lot of ways. So, And in a way, children are the teachers because they are a more pure, untainted version of humanity. Um, and... They, like I said before, they haven't had the social and cult- cultural brainwashing yet. The reason I'm so passionate about this topic is, for those of you wondering, since I don't have kids, is because me and my husband actually volunteer with a nonprofit group here in Los Angeles called the Torch Foundation that helps um, troubled kids. Mm-hmm. And the work that I have done with these kids, it is all on you guys' parents. I hate to say it's all the parents' fault, but the majority of children that we worked with that had major, main, major problems, it was all coming from the home life. Um, many of the children had alcoholic parents who, and, but the main issue, Stephen, it's so crazy that you talk about listening is that these children did not feel heard. 
And, you know, we had everything from just simply shy kids. Like, that was their issue was just being shy. It wasn't like they were, you know, raping or murdering at 15. Mm -hmm. Um, The program is for 13 to 17-year-olds. And um, we had everyone from just kids who were shy and underperforming in school to kids that were uh, on probation, you know, had been juvenile uh, offenders. Mm -hmm. So we had the full spectrum of the range um, of kids. And... 100%, 100%, I'm not even going to say 99%, 100% of the kids, the problems stem from bad parenting. Yeah. So, you know, if you are having any problems of, with your children, um, you know, to say, oh, I don't know what little Johnny's problem is, or I don't know, I don't know what to do with him or her. Mm-hmm. Stephen, I think you're 100% right. The first thing to do is listen. The second, the first thing to do is look in the mirror mm-hmm. at yourself, at what you've done wrong. Mm-hmm. And the second thing to do is to, um, look at, and listen to at the to the kids and listen to what they have to say. And you know, ignorance is not a um, uh, defense these days, no, <laughs> as no, it fine. was as it was back in the day when you could say, "Hey, you know, we, there's no school for parenting. We just have to learn the the school of hard knocks." Guess what, people? It's called the internet. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Yeah, there we go. And yeah. there's literally millions of books and websites and blogs and other informational websites where you can get information so you know there's even mommy blogs and mommy groups and other things on facebook and Mm -hmm. you know so you know get out there and get connected exactly it's not the Mm -hmm. 1950s anymore where you can say well you know that's all we had and we don't know what we're doing you really isolation exactly you really Mm -hmm. cannot pretend like you don't know what you're doing Mm -hmm. um Mm -hmm. I want to talk about people who are on the fence, like myself, who are deciding whether or not to have children. Um, Do you think that this child-free movement is coming from uh, people just being disillusioned with the world? Or it seems like it's a very positive movement, though, towards self-actualization. Yeah. What are your thoughts on this? I haven't dug into child-free all that much um you know i i think my emphasis is on birthing my own inner child Mm -hmm. uh Mm -hmm. there were just so many opportunities that i missed out on as a kid so many ways in which my growth and my learning were stunted so many ways in which i was set back so many ways in which i was hit and yelled at and made to sit and be quiet and um I, that's my focus. So I'm intensely involved in that. That's what I do every day is I just I just seek to birth my, you know, bring my inner child to maturity. I think you become a self-actualized adult when you take all those child sides of you and you reparent them. And, and nurture them, right? And nurture them and they become adults. Then you become a real adult, emotionally speaking. So, so that's my focus. So if anyone wants to delay... Or just not have children in order to do that, then you're an ally to me and I'm in your camp. That's what I would say with that. What about the idea that people who don't want children are selfish? Let's talk about that because I hear that one all the time. Mm-hmm. Why, do, you know, why haven't you guys had kids yet? Is it because you're so selfish? Let's talk about how silly that is. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Let's let's dish. Well, <laughs> I think it's it's like uh, you know selfish well damn right <laughs> you know i i lived you know and i would say personally it's like well i lived with public school for 17 years or whatever or you, i entered in fifth grade so or when i was five years old so 12 years 12 years 13 years of public school it's like damn right i'm selfish i didn't, <laughs> I didn't get to do anything i fucking wanted during those years you know, now I'm becoming a musician. Now I'm becoming a writer. Now I'm getting into, you know, more healthy diet. Now I'm going for long walks and contemplating. Now I'm going on the weekends to fun places with my friends. It's like now now I get to be all the things that I couldn't be then. So so, so there you go. Like, well, and and logic, I love it. That logic doesn't even make sense because, first of all, let's use that logic, right? Let, let's use the logic that I'm so selfish I don't want to have kids. Well, um, if that is truly the logic, then why would someone want a selfish person to have kids? That doesn't even make sense, yeah. right? So if I'm so about myself that I can't think of anyone else, then why would 
why would you want that type of person to have children? That doesn't <laughs> even make sense, go. right? Yeah. So that logic is totally flawed. But I hear that as a regular um, um, thing that people talk about is that well, people that don't want to have kids are selfish. Well, I don't. I think it's actually very selfish to have children if you don't want children. Yeah, I think so. And and it's like you've got to learn to give to yourself before you can give to another. So, mm, so you've, yes. you've really got to learn how to be your own good parent. And, and a lot of it comes through self-care, like brushing your teeth every night, going, getting a good night's sleep, eating a good diet, exercising regularly. It's like a lot of these things are just real basic things that you can do. And I talk about it a lot. I have like a series, basics of self-care and stuff like this. And it's like you've got to learn to do this for yourself first before you go and you pretend that you can do this with some other human being who's going to be <laughs> wild and independent and curious and challenging. It's like, well, no, 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 no. You got to do it for yourself first. So. I just want to break that logic because I hear that one a lot. Is that is that people that don't want kids are selfish, mm-hmm. and um, I think it's actually very selfless to want to fix your own problems before bringing another person into this world. And a, and another stereotype is that people that don't want children hate kids which is oh. anyone who has seen me around kids knows that that's absolutely not the case at all. I absolutely adore and love children, which is why I don't want to bring one into the world and totally screw it up if I'm not ready. Yeah. Um, in addition to that, and I don't want to, you know, I'm not bashing parents because I know a lot of people who are absolutely amazing parents and doing a great job. I just want to bring forth this information for those of you who maybe aren't, um, as gifted as, as some of these amazing parents to know that there are tools out there to become an even better parent. And, um, and maybe some of you who are projecting your, your mini me's out there and forcing your kids to do things that you wanted to do. Like you said, the unfulfilled child, the, the unnurtured child inside of you and realize that so that you can stop putting your issues onto your, or your kids and, and facilitate them more as Steven mentioned. Yeah, yeah. It's all, it all starts with the inside job. So you gotta you gotta work on yourself, and then out of that springs how you're gonna have a romantic relationship, how you're gonna have friendships, and then down the line, should you choose to have children, uh, that as well. So, and also, you know, mentorship is not just for. Um uh, occupation. You can find a parental mentor, you know, maybe someone that you know who uh, is really great with kids. And if you have a kid and, and maybe share and trade some ideas with them, like I said, the internet is always a viable option. Yeah, you've got to connect. If, I mean, if you're a parent already, just get out there and connect and um, and bring other mature adults around you. That's what I would say. And, and, and don't hit, don't yell. You know, these are the basic things. Use use reason, use evidence, reason with your child. Listen, 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 listen. <laughs> <laughs> I, it's so it sounds so radical to me just because of the way I was raised for for to say, uh, don't punish. But it you know when you reasoned it the way you did, and from from my personal experience looking back, it, it's crazy. You're totally right, Stephen. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And the way I feel about it is like I don't so much have to disprove disciplining as much as I have to champion for listening and using reason and evidence. But I mean, it's just everything. It's like everything clicked when you said that, you know, like, like you just, people just think kids are bad or misbehaved or wild or unruly or whatever, Mm -hmm. but it's just so true. All the kids I grew up with who are, you know, problem children, they had problems at home and they had, you know, other internal things. And like you said, with the, the temper tantrum at the grocery store, how did it get to this point? That's, that's very, very, um, thoughtful. Um, we have to wrap up. Is there anything else? Where can people find you? Tell us a little bit about your podcast, Nurturing Truth, which is awesome. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, so so you can find me at nurturingtruth.com. You can drop me a line if you have some feedback or um, you're just interested in what I have to say uh, at Stephen at nurturingtruth.com. And I basically am on this, this epic uh, self knowledge journey and. Um, you know, I'm working on myself every day. I'm suffering, I'm grieving, and I'm growing. And, you know, sometimes I'm depressed. Sometimes I'm over the moon. It's like just working on myself every day, getting really real, getting really honest. And so everything that is on the show, everything that's on the YouTube channel and on the website is a product of that, is some is some mile marker, some signpost along the trail that I've walked and, and this sort of path that I'm pioneering for myself. So I share my gifts when I feel so inclined and I keep to myself when I do. It's, I think that's part of the growth process. You've got to 
go inside and take care of yourself first. So I've, I've, committed, I've committed my life to that, and that's the basic essence of what I'm about at this stage in my life. And, and I posit with a lot of humility that, you know, I'm going to change. I'm going to grow, and these ideas I have now um, are going to evolve. So, so that's, that's what I'm about. That's my, that's my thing. That's, that's just what I'm into. So if you're into that, I would say, you know, let's get connected and, and um, let's chat. And again, I think he is speaking a lot of truth because like I said, from personal experience, everything you said was true. You know, like I said, in my early 20s, I wanted to have all these kids and it was that unnurtured child inside of me that wanted to project outwards. And once I've healed myself, now I'm like a big kid. You know, I think we're kindred spirits in that way. I'm just doing everything that I want to (laughs) do. Yeah. Well, it's well, the, fun. the very last thing I want to say is, is like, if you work on yourself, there are going to be two things. There are going to be the, there's going to be the pain and the darkness, and there's going to be the uncomfortable times, and you're going, and there's going to be pain tolerance that you're going to have to develop for that. But then, then it's if like you super do fun. That, <laughs> then it's super fun. <laughs> then you get the gifts. Then you get the laughs. Then you get the music. Then you get the dancing. Then you get the joy. So it's like, it's really worth it. It's really worth the work. It is so, so worth it. And my yeah. sister makes fun of me all the time. She's like, you have the uh, personality of a five-year-old because me and my niece get along so well and I'm and that's like the biggest compliment <laughs> yeah yeah totally she's like, what are you, she's like what are you just doing as an adult you're just doing everything that you didn't get to do as a kid I'm like yeah yeah Bingo. that's right <laughs> it's yeah. my life now <laughs> um I just want to touch on one more uh topic before we sign off because Let's do it. there has been such an onslaught in the past um 10, 15 years of all these childhood supposed psychological disorders, ADHD, you know, autism, all of these spectrum diseases and disorders. And it seems like every single day I hear of another childhood quote unquote disorder. Are these in your professional belief, actual disorders, or is a lot of this children who are not being nurtured correctly? And that's just how children act, you know, because I've heard that a lot with the ADHD community, a lot of people saying, well, that's just how kids act. And now they're just labeling it. Yeah. Yeah, that's, I mean, what I'll say with that is, is, <laughs> this is great. I'm going to say, I think, <laughs> I think it's fabricated. I think it's a bunch of bullshit. Like I just, I heard about this thing called oppositional defiance disorder. <laughs> oh my gosh. Is Are you kidding just, me? Is this just a way for insurance companies to pay out money? Is it, I mean, is this all bullshit? Yeah, it's part of the War on Kids. There's okay. a great, there's I a great ha- documentary called War on Kids. Yeah, the, I, I have heard this so much. I hear all these new disorders every single week. Well, this kid has this disorder, the, and and then they'll describe the symptoms. I'm like, I'm pretty sure that's just being a kid. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, that's exactly what it is. And the kids that are too smart for public school get labeled with ADHD, and then they get slowed down with these these pills that uh, limit their heart growth and and stunt them emotionally. It's like, no, they're just they're they're just being difficult. kids. They're they're too wild. They're too out of the box for public school. They they need to be somewhere where they can flourish. They're not not on drugs and they just they need to be quote unquote controlled because they're being oh too smart. <laughs> yeah, it's a way of controlling children, and it just continues on in, into adulthood. I mean, I I heard something over like a like a quarter of adults in the United States are on psych meds. Oh my god! I mean, not good. Not good. No, it's it's um. I this think is it's, coming from a therapist, guys. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Just yeah. so you know, so many um, mental health professionals that I've talked to have said the same thing, that they just think that these childhood disorders are just bullshit. So yeah. don't believe all, you know, this is kind of why I question a lot of quote unquote science, because there, you know, there are some science out there. I'm using very loose quotes that are, um, let's just say you have to see who's funding the studies. <laughs> yeah, you've got to follow the money. And then follow also follow the you've... money. Who is funding this quote unquote scientific study yeah. if it's you know big pharma then put a big question mark on it mm-hmm. well and and you've got to remember that philosophy is the underpinning of all the other schools of, of knowledge in 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 the human canon so it's like uh where the philosophy isn't good the science that follows afterward is going to be fucked yeah. so so you're going to have sciences that are going to be anti-human anti-life anti-children and um, pharmaceuticals on, in the brains of children is is an extension of that. So, so I think you've got to really get down to brass tacks and get deep into the philosophy and the truth of what's going on in human interrelations. And and that's just that's my playground. That's where I like to hang out. So. And if you're listening and you're like, no, no, my kid really does have ADHD. He's out of control. She's out of control. Maybe try taking the meds off and and talk to your kid and try some of these techniques that Stephen's talk talking about because. Yeah. Um, 
I, I truly believe that a lot of these disorders are, are actually pseudoscience. And, yeah, and consult yeah. with a doctor, consult with a therapist, a not a psychiatrist. <laughs> yeah, and be gentle with it because, because the, you know, the kids that go on these shooting sprees, they're on, they're on these psychotropic meds. And it's almost, it can be just as damaging to switch them right off. So, yeah. so according it's to something science, to be careful with. According to science, um, actual science, a, a lot of these um, drugs actually destroy um, uh, connectors in your brain. You know, there's many, many very addictive drugs that will destroy those those um, nerve endings in, that are sending signals in your brain so that the child or adult, whoever's taking them, become addicted to them and need them for those connections to work. Mm. So you're doing some major damage. And this is real science. There's been so many studies about how um, dangerous these drugs are. And then there's counter studies paid for by the pharmaceutical companies that, you know, have that sell these drugs and then, you know. Um, so be very careful what you're putting your kids on. Sometimes your kids are just unruly and wild because they're, you know, some of us have a uh, wild, wild horses and not, not tame horses in our, in our house. Yes. If that's okay. Just learn how to run with a wild horse. <laughs> yes, exactly. Oh, so good to hear you say this, Rosie. I love it. Yeah, it's so true. And I am so happy that you, uh, were a guest on the show and everyone, please, please, please go on the nurturing truth blog and check out Stephen's videos on um, YouTube and also support his lovely music. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, let's let's keep it up. Let's do another one of these sometime. Yes, I loved having you on. And guys, this has been Out of the Box Podcast with Rosie Tran. Out of the Box is sponsored by HugMeTees.com. Spread love, give a hug, HugMeTees.com. Stitcher, SoundCloud, and of course iTunes. And don't forget to visit OutOfTheBoxPodcast.com. Guys, we have a large and very nice donate button if you would like to support the podcast, which I produce and promote and do everything for free and actually lose money sometimes doing the podcast. Click on the donate button and that helps us out a lot. We are now accepting Litecoins and Bitcoins um, and all alternative currency. This has been Out of the Box Podcast with Rosie Tran. Mm-hmm.